everyone, it's Michaela. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a video talking about all of the books fisheries majors should own and read. I have quite the collection sitting next to me and it is so heavy that I cannot pick it up and show you. But I have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 books to get through. So I have quite the number of books to show you guys. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy and let's dive in. First, I'm going to start off with the book I am reading for class right now. I am about halfway through and it is called Future of the Last Wild Food for Fish. So it is about this writer and fisherman named Paul Greenberg who wrote this book and I really like his point of view because he's not a scientist and as a scientist myself I think it is really important that we have fishermen's voices in our literature because they are a big role in the equation of fisheries and ocean science and saving our fish stocks. So he goes through four fish as the title says so he goes through salmon, tuna, bass, and cod. So right now I am on the cod chapter. I have probably about 30 more pages and this book is so good. I have made so many highlights throughout the chapters and it basically starts off with him talking about his history and what led up to him writing this book. And then he talks about the salmon, tuna, bass, and cod populations. For the salmon, he went to this rural village in Alaska. Uh, we haven't read tuna yet. Tuna is the next chapter. The bass, they talked about how they want to farm bass and the fishery history with that. And with cod, they are also talking about the fisheries history with that cod species. So I'm going to assume with the tuna chapter, it's going to go in a similar direction as the previous three. But I really, really like this book. It's a really easy read and it makes it very easy to follow along. Paul is a great writer and a great explainer. And I think that helps the fact that he doesn't come from a scientific background because a lot of science books, and I'm sure a lot of you can agree, are just so boring and so hard to read. But Paul does a great job making this book really easy to understand and really engaging. The next book is also written by a fisherman and it is called Eat Like a Fish, My Adventures Farming the Ocean to Fight Climate Change. So this one doesn't focus on fish too deeply. It's more about kelp farming and ocean farming and aquaculture. But if you guys didn't know, aquaculture is probably the future of our oceans. We have a lot of seaweed production going on, especially here in the Pacific Northwest. Alaska is kind of building its roots in aquaculture. And this book is written by Bren Smith, and he's coming to my class, I think in the next couple weeks to talk about his book. So I am very, very excited. My campus gave us this book. It was part of the one book or the one campus, one book collaboration thing. I'm not too familiar with it. But just like Four Fish, this was written not with a scientific background, but a fisherman who basically sailed the seas and took a bunch of notes and has really documented his fight for climate change and his start to ocean farming and aquaculture. So I really, really enjoyed this book. It was a really quick read. This one's just under 280 pages minus the references. And it was just a super fast read. I think I read this in like three or four days. So I really liked this book and I'm so excited to hear him talk in my class and to see what else he has to say. And I have a lot of questions to ask him about his book. So very excited. The next book I'm pretty sure is a textbook, but I found it on Amazon and my boyfriend bought it for me. It is called The Behavior and Ecology of Pacific Salmon and Trout. It is a very hefty book, but if you guys like take a look inside, it is very much like a textbook and it is beautifully written. I have not read it like cover to cover. This isn't a book that you read like religiously from start to finish but I do use this book to reference fishery stuff and reference a bunch of things since it is a huge topic of Alaska obviously Pacific salmon and trout 
and this was a little bit expensive I think this was like $70 I'm gonna make a link little thing to all these books down in the description box but out of all of these books this one was definitely the most expensive leading me to also think that it is a textbook because of how expensive it was but if you are interested in Pacific Salmon and Trout I definitely recommend this I am not a huge fan of ecology I took ecology a year ago and I was not a fan I did not enjoy it but this book is really really great it has great illustrations great pictures and it's a great reference book if you need to look something up the next book is called Upstream Searching for Wild Salmon from River to Table by Langdon Cook. I think I'm saying his first name right. But Langdon basically traveled from Alaska to California searching for salmon and he talks about how salmon aren't just this fish that we eat for food. They have a lot of cultural representation. He talks to a lot of elders about it and that they feed the bears, the eagles, they feed the rainforest here in Alaska. And I have read a couple chapters. This was a book that I started but didn't really comprehend what I was reading because I need to read things like eight times to comprehend them. But I am really excited to dive into this over the summer. I'm the type of person I really can't read more than one book at a time, especially if it's about fish or marine biology because they all just intertwine and I started reading this and then we started a book in class and this went out the window but I really really liked this it explains that salmon aren't just for our consumption and they have a lot of roles in our ecosystem and I really liked it it came with a lot of different point of views and I just would recommend this book if you want to learn about salmon not in a fishery sense but more in a cultural sense if that makes sense. The next book is called Salmon Wars The Dark Underbelly of Our Favorite Fish by Douglas France and Catherine Collins. So this book is basically exploiting, not exploiting, what's the word? I can't think of the word. Basically, it's uncovering the dark reality of where we get a lot of our salmon for consumption in our house, in our restaurants. And this talks a lot about Atlantic salmon because if you guys didn't know, Atlantic salmon is the most common farmed fish. And I personally don't agree with fish farms. Hatcheries are a little bit different. They talk a lot about hatcheries in this book. But the hatchery in town that we have here in Juneau is one of the better hatcheries that I have seen and read about. So hatcheries are a very double-edged sword for me. Fish farms, I don't agree with. I think that what they do is very, very damaging to our environment. But that's a different video. If you guys want a video about fish farms and hatcheries, I can definitely make it. But this book just goes into the dark side of what we are eating on our dinner plates. Actually, not our dinner plates. I don't eat salmon. Everybody else's dinner plates. And I really recommend doing research on where your seafood comes from. And I grew up with a family of hunters, so I always knew where my meat was coming from. My elk, my bear, my duck, everything. I always knew where it was coming from. And the fact that so many Americans don't know Number one, where their food is coming from, and number two, how damaging it is to our environment is a little sad. So I recommend this book to anyone who eats salmon. I don't care if you eat it once a week, three times a week, once a year. If you consume salmon that you are not catching yourself, I recommend this book for you right here. This next book is called Salmon, People, and Place, A Biologist's Search for Salmon Recovery, and it is by Jim Lichtowich. I'm definitely butchering that last name, so I apologize to you, Jim. But this book I really, really wanted to get into, and I really wanted to enjoy. I got about halfway through, and I just could not get into it. 
it talks a lot about the ecological aspects of salmon and it also talks about Jim's plan to restore Pacific Northwest salmon. So it's a really great book but there's a lot of sociological aspects and like anthropology aspects and that's just not what I enjoy reading. And I really wish that I could get into it because it's a very quick read, but it took me like three weeks to get like this far in. I wasn't enjoying it. Maybe I will reach back at it and give it one more try after I go through all my other to reads. But this one is really great if you love the kind of sociological aspect and anthropology aspect that comes with fisheries. But that's really not me. I enjoy the science part, not really the social science part. The next book is called Made of Salmon, Alaska Stories from the Salmon Project. This is by Nancy Lord. I shouldn't say by because she didn't write it. She's just the editor of this book because this book is full of stories from people all over Alaska talking about their experience with salmon. I love, 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 loved this book. I love hearing from different Native Alaskans and just different Alaskan populations about salmon because as much as Texas wants to claim they are the largest state, they are not. So Alaska is huge and we really don't have a lot of people to represent all of this land that we have. So it's really great that all of these stories were put together in a book. This next book I've talked about on my channel before and it is King of Fish The Thousand Year Run of Salmon by David Montgomery. This book is really great. It goes back a thousand years and it goes, where does it go? The United Kingdom to New England and the Pacific Northwest talking about how basically us humans have destroyed the salmon population from point A to point C and I really like it. It talks about the salmon recovery process and it talks about just how devastating we were to this population of fish. And I just don't think people understand how much damage we do to our planet and to our salmon runs in general. Atlantic salmon are the better half extinct pretty much in the wild so far that they have only farmed them and put them out in grocery stores. So all of the Atlantic salmon that are purchased in the grocery store come from fish farms. And I don't know about you, I don't know if it's growing up eating elk or deer that was roaming free three days ago and now it's on my dinner plate, but I don't want to eat fish from a fish farm. That just sounds disgusting. They have no flavor, they have no nutrients, and they're horrible for our planet, but to each their own. He also talks about ways that we could help our salmon populations. This book says, reinventing the ways in which we make environmental decisions about land, water, and fish and making provocative recommendations. So I really liked this book. My friend recommended this to me actually before I switched over to fisheries, but I really liked it and I think you would too. The next book is a TikTok recommendation actually from someone who is not even on science TikTok. She's more on like the granola outdoorsy side, but it is called Stronghold, One Man's Quest to Save the World's Wild Salmon. It is by Tucker Malarkey and basically it's about this guy who drops everything. He was a fly fisherman, drops everything, travels from Alaska to Oregon to Russia to study and save wild stocks of salmon. And it is a really great book. I have probably 100 pages left, which let's be real, I'm probably going to go back and reread it because I can't comprehend anything. But this is a really great book. This was super cheap on Amazon, if I remember correctly. I think this was the last book that I bought before I went on, like, my no buying books New Year's resolution. I have so many books in my bookshelf that I just haven't touched, and I just kept buying more. So my goal for this year is to go through all of my books in my bookshelf before buying a new one. And this was the last one that I bought and I already read it. So we're one book closer to being able to buy a new book. I really like this. This is also from a fisherman's perspective. As you can see, we kind of have a trend of my books, a fisherman's perspective, 
where my old perspective that I really liked reading was scientist perspective, but fishermen have a lot of good insight into salmon populations and believe it or not, not all of them are horrible and want to destroy our oceans. And I hope that these books that I am showing you have been proof of that. The next book is called Being Salmon, Being Human, Encountering the Wild in Us and Us in the Wild. It is by Martin Mueller and it was forewarded by Stephen Harding. So it basically talks about the United States population of salmon and the Norwegian population of salmon, which I thought was really cool because I never hear anything about populations of salmon other than the United States and Russia occasionally, but being able to hear the Norwegian side of things was really cool. And they basically talk about weaving together the key kind of roles that humans and salmon play in the environment and how they coincide together and how all these pieces come together to make what we see as the salmon populations and salmon industry. I really liked this book. It was a little bit of a harder read for me. It's a little bit of a longer read, but I recommend this book to anyone who wants to learn more about the human and wild salmon population relationship. The next book is called Salmon, A Fish, the Earth, and the History of Their Common Fate by Mark Kirk Kirklansky. Again, I'm sorry, Mark, I am butchering your last name, but this book is another one of the books that I will not read cover to cover, probably. I will more than likely just pick through and reference things, but it's another one of these books that is kind of like a textbook, kind of not. I would call this a tabletop book that I can put on like my coffee table and if someone is interested at my house they can like flip through it or if I want to like read a couple pages I can do that but this is a very long and very wordy book but it has some cool pictures in it. I've read a couple pages here and there and it's really interesting but I bought this book specifically to be like a coffee table book. Um, so I haven't read too far into it. Maybe one day when I actually have a coffee table again, I will sit down, sip my coffee, and read this book. But if you're looking for a very cute, very decorative tabletop book, I recommend this. Those are all of the books that I recommend to any fishery major, any fisheries major or fisheries biologist, or anybody who wants to know more about fish. Let's be honest though, they were kind of all about salmon. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!